Week eight of the Massachusetts high school football season and we're here at Community Field in lovely North Attleboro, Massachusetts for one of our Hockamock League Triangle games as we've <laughs> anointed them earlier in the season. One of the big appointment viewing dates of any Massachusetts high school football season here in North Attleboro. The Mansfield Hornets will be coming here, the North Attleboro Big Red. This is going to be uh, another one of those classics. We've seen it in recent years. Always a very compelling game, always a very tight game. And uh, what else can you say about this match? I mean, when really, when you, when you think about and you talk about grassroots football in the New England region, it really doesn't get more uh, grassroots than here. I mean, look at this. We're on a glorified Pop Warner field. All right, we're right in nestled in, right in the thick of Wolfhound, right off Main Street. And I don't know. For me, the last time th there was a game here that was decided by more than ten points. I mean, every year it seems it comes down to a, a defensive play in the second half, or or a game-winning touchdown in the last minute of the game. Mm -hmm. Just every year, it's riveting. Uh, it's always jam-packed here. This, this place loads up two hours before the game, um, and, and uh, on top of that, one of my favorite fields to cover a football game out here, Community Field. Yeah. Um, it, it really doesn't get much better than this, regardless of what the records are. Yep. Yeah. So before we get into breaking down the matchup, a uh, reminder as always that this segment is brought to you by the Massachusetts Army National Guard. To find out how you can go to college tuition free, go to nationalguard.com. And Brendan, obviously, we'll start off the top here with uh, this North Attleboro offense. Uh, had some growing pains uh, without Alex Jetty in the lineup. Uh, had a tough, you know, game and get thrown against them and Fian. They get into Hockamock League play. Uh, they struggle a little bit uh, there in a couple weeks. You know kind of been a factor there without him in the lineup, but what can we expect from this North offense coming in? Well, it, it looks like he will be back this week, uh, returning from a leg injury, mm -hmm. uh, and that's a huge plus for them. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think in the Hockamock League to survive, you need that breakaway, breakout player, you know, like Stoughton has with Marcus Middleton, or or Foxborough has with Kevon Howard. Uh, you need a player like that. It's such a dogfight every week in this league, and and obviously we saw it in the first two weeks of the season against LaSalle, Academy Rowland, and then against BC High. Uh, the kid is just for for this league. Uh, he's a special talent. He's got that speed. He's got, he's got some some great moves. He's a great two way player. Uh, I think having him back and, and depending on how healthy he is could be a boost for them. We're going to talk to Ryan Perrin in just a little bit. The guy who's really kind of held down the offense in Alex Jetty's absence, but with the man coming back, here he is, Alex Jetty. Joined now by Alex Jetty. Now, Alex, uh, we talked to you earlier in the season with uh, that game against LaSalle. Uh, you guys came out in a big way. Things get a little more complicated from there. Uh, you know, you had some injuries uh, that you've dealt with personally. This team's kind of trying to find itself an identity on offense coming in here. Had you know uh, some ho tough Hockamock League games coming in, but uh, against Mansfield, really, this is a rivalry game. And how much of everything that has you know kind of happened to this point gets thrown out the window, perhaps this week? Well, you know, from now on, we have to treat every game as if it's going to be our last. We have our backs against the wall. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to win out every. Hawkmuck League game from now on to have a chance. So I don't. I know it's a big rivalry, but I think we have to go at every week the same and know that we have to win the game. Now we're going to talk to Ryan Perrin in just a moment here, but uh, you know, with with you kind of coming in and out of the lineup, Ryan I think is really you know taking some big strides forward here this year, filling in for uh, Spiro after last year. Um, just kind of what he's developed into as a quarterback and and the command of the offense that he has. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he was. This is his first year starting, mm -hmm. so uh, he definitely, first couple of games, he had to get used to the whole, he also has to be a passer and a runner, but I think he really evolved where now he can do both, you know, very well mm -hmm. and get, you know, just makes our offense that more potent. And then uh, looking at the other side of the ball here, when you look at this man's field defense on film, uh, always a physical group, you know, they're, mm -hmm. you know, kind of a ball hawking, ball hawking, playmaking group. Uh, just kind of what stands out when you when you look at them. I think they always they always have uh, 11 guys to the ball, you know, they'll mm -hmm. chase it down from anywhere. So we got to, it's, it's going to be a physical game, but we got to outsmart them mentally. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to uh, just know what to do on every play and execute. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much, Alex. Now we're going to flip the page here and take a look at this Mansfield defense. Uh, you know, perhaps an underrated group in the Hockamock League. We've talked so much about King Phillip and their defense. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Mansfield coming off a big win there, kind of a blowout fashion. Mm -hmm. uh, but a couple uh, big plays there on defense as well for that Mansfield group last yeah, week. Yeah, th this is a group that was and that was really impressive what they did last week against King Phillip. Kind of owned the game from, the, from about five minutes in the first quarter on there and able to create some turnovers and, and, and score off those turnovers. 
Uh, one guy in particular, I know we can talk about a lot of the speed there uh, in, in the secondary and, and, and various other, other spots there, but uh, Will Polanza, a guy we really like at, at, at linebacker. He's a good two-way player for them and uh, one of the leaders on that defense. And, of course, the person who'll be looking into the grips of that Hornets defense <laughs> and making decisions will be senior quarterback Ryan Perrin. We got him right here. Joined now by North Attleboro Red Rocketeers quarterback Ryan Perrin. Now, Ryan, I want to rewind the clock a little bit last year. Uh, you know, Spiro Veratimo stepped in for this team. I think did a good job, was kind of a versatile guy, uh, was able to make some plays with his feet and hard, tough runner, kind of right. Tim Tebow-like. Yes. But uh, you've been able to air it out a little bit here with some success, and we'll get to Alex a little bit uh, later on the, in the screen game and, st and things like that. But, uh, you know, how has this uh, offense kind of evolved uh, with, since you've taken over? Uh, well, since the beginning of the season, we knew we had a lot of athletes coming in. Um, we have a bunch of guys on defense and offense that can play almost every position, mm -hmm. every skill position. So we like to use them as much as we can, kind of get guys in the edge a little bit and maybe, you know, get them out with their speed. Now, this offensive line that you have playing in front of you now, uh, North has had a, a pretty good string of offensive lines, I think, in recent memory. But this is probably the biggest uh, line. Just talk about some of those guys and what they've been able to do in front well, of you. Well, along with their size, they also work very hard in the offseason. So they're com they come prepared every day for practice, and they're there going 100%. And um, we also got some guards, too, that uh, have some speed, and they can pull a little bit. So yeah. we like to use them as well, even though they might have not as much size as the tackles. But mm -hmm. that's all right. Uh, when you take a look at this Mansfield defense this week on film, coming off that win against King Phillip last week, they had some big defensive plays there that, you know, kind of helped in that route. Um, th this is usually a big, you know, kind of agile group that's able to make plays in the secondary. But, you know, what do you see when uh, when you take a look at the film? Um, well, you know, I see a lot of guys that can play. Um, Mansfield definitely has a lot of athletes over there. So, you know, we're going to try to go at them, mm -hmm. and, you know, see what we, we can do to uh, beat them mentally as, as well physically. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much, Ryan. Moving right along here, we take a look at this Mansfield offense that uh, obviously hung 46 points against that, again, vaunted King Phillip defense last week. But this is a very skilled group coming in here, and it all starts with uh, a junior quarterback stepped in and done a really good job here, I think, in Kyle Wisniewski. Yeah, he's he's really uh, stepped into the role and, and, and played admirably the last couple of weeks. I think it starts with the receivers, uh, yeah. in my opinion. I mean, we only have to go back to that tip drill pass yeah, there. Amazing. Now, now, if I'm Mike Vaughn, the head basketball coach at Mansfield, I'm kind of uh, – I'm doing a quiet fist pump there. Uh, Brendan Hill and Michael Hurston, that's a combination you're going to hear a lot in the winter. But uh, for, for, for football season, I mean, you're talking about a team that can really uh, put some guys on the perimeter and, and put them in space. And, and we mentioned about the speed, you know, Ryan Raposa, Kevin McKee, uh, Brendan Hill, who's been a really nice uh, compliment for them as a sophomore, 6'5", wide receiver, mm -hmm. a basketball power forward. Uh, and, and, of course, uh, Hirschman uh, as well. He's got a number of weapons to throw to, and I think Redding does a good job uh, play calling. We've mentioned time and again about some coaches having a knack for for mm -hmm. making good play calls, and I think he, he's he's dialing up some good game plans lately. Uh, Mike Redding. Now we talked about the North offense before, and of course everybody focus paid on to Alex Jetty, but also his twin brother plays on this team, which is kind of interesting because you get the speed mm -hmm. in the backfield with Alex, and then his brother Ben is a key lineman on this team. So we caught up with him just moments ago. Joined now by Ben Jetty. These guys look a little bit familiar if you saw Alex a couple moments ago here. Um, ben, just talk about, obviously, uh, you think about North Attleboro football. There's been a lot of families that have come through here. Yeah, you think yeah. of, uh, obviously, Mr. Cummer and, and all the Cummer clan, and there's yeah. some on this team as well. Um, but just what it's like playing with your brother and, and what that means and the element that adds to this program. Uh, you know, it's great. You know, we've played together uh, our whole lives pretty much since Pop Warner. Mm -hmm. uh, I just familiar seeing him in the huddle it's kind of weird when he's not in there you know I, know. I like it <laughs> <laughs> now when he's running in the backfield uh does he is there kind of any uh, go you know back and forth between you you playing guard there you know being able to pull and saying yeah. hey you missed a block here what's that relationship like <laughs> well it was a lot more last year because he was on the right side so yeah. when he would run his uh, speed sweeps left i'd be out pulling for him but yeah. not so much this year but when he does get the ball on my side you know he gives me he gives me a little crap when i miss blocks sometimes but you know, I try to make them all. Now, you're another one of those, uh, you know, North Attleboro, you think, uh, you know, usually strong two-way players uh, from your linebacker position looking at this Mansfield offense coming in here. Well, a real head of steam coming off of last yeah, week, yeah. I think. Uh, they bring a lot of different elements, uh, you know, good ground game, 
big, you know, physical receivers as well yeah. in the passing game. You know, how have you guys kind of looked at the film and, and try to attack them this week? You know, we've been looking at it a lot. We think, you know, they obviously got some really big linemen. Mm -hmm. They got that uh, that wide receiver. He's pretty tall, good running back. But we think we're just going to we're come out hard, try to overpower him at the line of scrimmage and see what we can do. We were at Community Field earlier. Just talk a little bit about what um, that arena, um, you know, the, the cramped quarters uh, against Mansfield, it's always going to be a ton of people there. What does that add to the experience of not only uh, for you guys, but the Hockamock League, you know, week to week, really? It's great. We love playing at uh, Community Field, Grass Field. We like it better than Turf. It's really nice. Uh, yeah, it's real close. All the fans are right on the field. It gets real loud at times. Uh, just so used to playing that, I don't really know. It's, it's I love it. <laughs> I like it better than away fields. Yeah. yeah. Thanks very much, Ben. Now, Brennan, let's wrap it up with this North Attleboro defense here. You always look at Hockamock League teams, you know what you're getting. You're getting a tough, gritty defense up front with some speed in the secondary that can make plays. And this Red Rocketeers defense is really uh, no exception. Yeah, I mean, there's it's, it's a lot of uh, different plays you can point out there. One in particular I like to is uh, Sean Tricoma. Uh, we talk about high school uh, defensive uh, linemen. Uh, you can you can beat them with speed, and mm -hmm. you, can, you can play off the edge and, and really disrupt things from, from multiple different places. And he he really fulfills that role. Mm -hmm. uh, you look at the way Chandler Jones for the Patriots, for instance, you know, kind of sets the edge and mm -hmm. with his unique uh, regimen of moves there. And, and same deal, you, you you bring pressure off the edge uh, for a lot of high school quarterbacks. That can make, bring some confusion. You, you mentioned about uh, Everett BC High last mm -hmm. week, bringing all those different pressures off the edge and getting six sacks out of it. Mm -hmm. um, same deal can be applied here. Mm -hmm. you, you, you bring speed and, 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 and they, they can't really understand where it's coming from. I think you can do a lot of damage. And the master confusion behind that is really uh, <laughs> North head coach Don Johnson, who has a, a good hold of that defense, bringing pressure from all kinds of places, dog blitzes, man blitzes, all kinds of stuff he's going to throw at you. We broke it down with the coach. We'll wrap it up now with Coach Johnson. Coach, uh, talk a little bit about this Mansfield offense. Obviously, got things rolling in a big way against uh, a very good King Philip defense. There, they got out early. They a lot of, bring a lot of different elements. Obviously, you know that the ground game is always going to be good there, but they've got some big uh, playmaking receivers there now as well. Yeah, the big play capability is what concerns us the most, and I think you know in terms of our matchups with them, that's our most difficult matchup. Is they've got those tall receivers, and we got some midgets out in our secondary, so that's going to be a challenge for us. We talked about this a little bit last year. We did a chalk talk with you and talking about, you know, some of the blitz schemes that you guys bring. You guys are always very, uh, very creative with the play calling here. Um, but you also have good players to, to implement that system. How much uh, for you as coaches is making things uh, kind of digestible for them and, you know, making things, uh, you know, able to, to, to also work with inside of a team, but also use everybody's kind of strengths in concert together. How, you know, what, what is that balance like? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a big part of what coaching's all about, I think, is yeah. every year you have that challenge. And, you know, you, you, you need to do something that you think is creative and multiple because you want the other team to be back on their heels a little bit. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you get into that trap where we get it, we understand it as coaches, but do the kids know what we know? Mm -hmm. And sometimes uh, that means you have to slow down a little bit, you have to back up a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's what practice is all about. You know, we <laughs> kind of narrow down the game plan and then get the repetitions that we need so we can be multiple on Friday night. Now, talking about this week of practice, uh, you know, coming into this game with Mansfield, you guys got your backs up against a little wall. You, you know, looking at the way that the Hockamock has gone so far, though, I mean, who, who knows really what's going to happen week to week. Um, seeing those kinds of results going on around the league, does that, you know, this is always a big game every year, no matter what the circumstance. But we saw last year, uh, you know, we had that exotic, you know, kind of tiebreaker scenario come to fruition yeah. in Thanksgiving Day. You have to feel like, really, you're not out of this thing until the very bitter end. No, we're not. I mean, I, as you said, our backs are against the wall a little bit because we've got one loss right now, and Franklin and Mansfield don't have any in the division. So clearly they're in the driver's seat. But like you said, the way the league's been going this year, we, anything can happen on any given weekend. There's mm -hmm. a lot of good football teams out there. Uh, and if you don't play well, if you make a few too many mistakes, then any team on the schedule can beat you. And that's kind of the situation we've been in, just making a few too many mistakes along the way. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, we talked about it earlier in the preseason about this offensive line that you guys have always had a good line here traditionally while you've uh, been here, but this is perhaps the biggest line that you've had. Um, you know, with Alex in the backfield uh, coming in and out with injury, um, things that have gone there, but with, you know, Ryan stepping in at quarterback, how do you feel this uh, offense has kind of progressed to this point in the season? Well, uh, because of all the injuries, uh, we haven't progressed as quickly as we would like. It's mm -hmm. taken a while. It's been a little bit chaotic for us on offense. You know, uh, we started the season, we were solid up front, everybody was healthy. Uh, big loss has been Sean Peters has had a shoulder problem all year, and he's been in and out of the lineup, and we really miss him when he's not in there. He does a lot for us. Uh, but Eric Beckwith is a tackle on the other side. Uh, you know, he's been a two-way player for us, doing a great job. Harrison Carmichael as a guard inside. Uh, not, you know, not a real big kid. He's a 200-pounder, but he's very athletic, tough kid with a great motor. Uh, so th those guys have been doing a great job and giving us everything they have there, but when you come Combine that with the injuries to Alex and uh, several other backs, actually, we've kind of lost our big play capability. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've had to grind it out a little bit more on offense than we like to. And, you know, when you need to put together a 15 play drive, there's just little margin for error there. So mm -hmm. the penalty here and there or a missed snap and, uh, you know, it can set you back and it's been hard to recover from that. So mm -hmm. that's what we've been dealing with most of the year. And then, of course, uh, tie it up with this matchup here on Friday with Mansfield. You know, they always come in uh, with a very t tough physical defense up front. Uh, just what do you see when you look at them on, on the film? Well, they're just so well coached. They're fundamentally sound. So at this point in the year, they're really not going to do anything that we haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, anything really crazy or exotic. You know, we always expect a trick play or two on offense, but mm -hmm. uh, defensively, we expect them to be sound and physical. And, you know, they'll make us earn every inch that we get out there. So we have to be on top of our game. We have to be fundamentally sound on offense because we know it's going to be challenging and they're going to be tough on the other side. And of course, we always know what the atmosphere is going to be like when it's North Mansfield Community Field. Just do you sometimes, uh, you've been doing this for a while now. Yeah. I won't date you, Don. Don't worry <laughs> about that. But, uh, you know, do you ever, you know, going into those types of games, such as a, a great intimate setting, um, do you ever sometimes take a step back and just kind of soak it all in and, and what it is? Yeah, you know, once the game starts, you really don't get a chance to do <laughs> yeah. that. So it's usually kind of in pregame and then after the game or when you're watching the film and you're, they're panning the crowd or something, you're like, hey, that was a good crowd out there that <laughs> night, you know. Uh, but the setting itself, as you say, it's an intimate setting. Uh, the crowd's right on top of you. So you can't help but be in the game and be excited about playing when you're playing in that ap atmosphere. Thanks very much, Coach Johnson. Now, Brennan brings us to our favorite part of our Thursday preview. As always, it's pick a -rama time. You ready for this? Gee, you know, we've been getting confronted about our picks lately. I think I'm just going to pick everyone to win every game this week. Yeah, it's T-shirt time, everybody. No, game. no, but that isn't any fun, is it? No, no, no. no. no we're going to hang, <laughs> hang us to us as always, folks, and we're going to get it started in a big way. The DCL Large, this is really a critical matchup up there. Lincoln Sudbury, uh, kind of a team that's been up and down in recent weeks, and Westford Academy that, uh, you know, this is a very intriguing offense there. Yeah, you know, Westford's been knocking on the door the last couple of years in the DCL. Uh, and I, I think it comes down to Justin Mount. He's a, he's a unique player for that league. He's a, he's a unique athlete, plays a lot of different roles for them. I think he's a difference in I got Westford winning. I'm going to go with Lincoln Sudbury. I'm going to go with them coming away with a big win on the road. Chris Giorgio, again, one of those uh, two-way lacrosse football stars, I think will be the difference in that one. Uh, we'll swing it along. Swing it around to the Merrimack Valley Conference and uh, another large division. Con the, these these are some really big games coming up here. Uh, you know, teams getting into the the real thick of their schedule. Uh, Central Catholic plays a visit to Lowell. I know Lowell's a team that we I think we've gotten a question about every weekend on our Sunday night <laughs> chat with good reason too. Yeah. This is a very talented Raiders team. And you look at that Bill Record game. I mean, it was just boom, boom, boom. And, yeah. and the last yeah. couple of years, the offense they've been running even even before they got this new head coach. Um, you look at the Nashville South game last year. For instance, R.J. Noel thrown for 500 yep. yards of yep. offense. Um, it seems like every year Lowell is one of these teams that just throws a bunch of yep. bunch of points on the board, and, and, and it's almost a shootout. But then again, there's a lot of Merrimack Valley teams like that. I think this could be another one. I just think Central Catholic defensively is a little bit more sound. I know it sounds silly coming off a 56-34 win by Lowell, in which uh, Bill Rucker got some points in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. However, um, Central, Central has kind of come around uh, quite a bit since that loss uh, to St. John's Prep. And honestly, I don't think they looked that bad in that prep loss. 
loss, as, as, mm-hmm. as many w- would perceive it to be. Uh, I'm going to take Central Catholic in this one. I'm going to go with the Raiders as well from Central. Uh, Santino Brancato, a big uh, play for them last week to win that game. I'm going to stick with them. And uh, Central Catholic, of course, back in our top 25 poll again this week. Should mention that. Uh, sticking with the Merrimack Valley, uh, we got another big one with Andover visiting Chelmsford. Chelmsford on a three-game losing streak now tailed off a little bit, but mm-hmm. still a very dangerous team. Chelmsford, the real dark horse here. Jeff Yaria. Um, they still have just, you know, they have bodies, they have numbers, mm-hmm. they have a terrific uh, defensive mind there in Bruce Rich, mm-hmm. one, one of the best in the area. Mm-hmm. Uh, however, this Andover team excels at, at, at getting guys in space, underneath routes, deep routes, whatever have, have you. Uh, I, I really think C.J. Scarpa, I know he, he's a little underrated because of his size. I think he throws a great ball. Mm-hmm. I think he's got that high arm slot to, to get those guys in space. Mm-hmm. Uh, Will Heikening, Cam Farnham, Andrew Delore. I mean, pick your poison, really. Yeah. Uh, I think it's going to be a big day for Andover to have them winning. I'm going to go the same way. Just too many weapons, really, to stop there, I think, for that Lions defense. Um, sticking with Friday night action here, a non-leaguer, but uh, really a real fixture in uh, you know Eastern Central Mass with Brockton traveling to Lemonster in uh, Lem- Minster. Wow, I got to tell you, one of the greatest high school football games I've ever seen in my really? in my life last week. They always seem to put on a show, don't they? They do. They, they do. don't. They don't. They. Uh, last year when Lemonster shut them out, thirty-three uh, nothing. It was a bit of a surprise. I think. I think it was a wake up call to, to to Brockton fans that hey, you got to change the tune a little bit here. Mm-hmm. It's a new ball game with Palazzi in town, and uh, you know we saw that last week, and he's got some some moxie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, how many coaches with four seconds left with the game on the line says to their kid, hey? <laughs> What do you think works here? Yeah. No, most and 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 he's a guy that that really demands a lot of his quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. So that that really set a, a big statement for me. And not only that, but he called the right play. Yeah. You know, a, a ninety series one step drop, a hitch there, and 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 threw it there perfectly. But back to the, back to this game, uh, I said at the beginning of the, in the in the preseason that Lemonster could win this one. I'm gonna have to stick to it. I think. Uh, they can do enough things to kind of keep the Brockton defense on their toes. Uh, offensively, they throw a lot of different things at you. And I think, you know, winning that game against St. John's, they had been kind of lagging yeah. the prior few weeks. I think that was kind of a, you know, kick in the second gear. You, you notice once they get that second gear, I mean, things take off just like it did last year. I got, yeah. I got limits to winning that one. Yeah, I agree. I was really impressed by Neil O'Connor, too, the guy mm-hmm. that came down with that touchdown catch. And, uh, of course, Brockton, you know, going to be aided. Augie Roberts back in the mm-hmm. back in the mix here playing quarterback last week against Durfee. But I'm going to go with the Blue Devils as well uh, this week. We're going to stay uh, in, in lockstep here for a little bit. But I, I think we might dissent a little bit on this one, uh, this ultimate Patriot Keenan <laughs> League uh, matchup between uh, Hingham and Duxbury. Uh, what can we say? Two great defenses really going at it. Yeah, you know, and this is probably their toughest battle last year, Duxbury. Yep. You saw the way that that game turned out. Um, gee, this seems like a really trendy upset pick, doesn't it? Yeah. It has that feel to it. You can feel it. You can feel it right in, right, right in here. You know, I'm going to have to stick with Duxbury, though. I, I, I think they're going to pull it out. They, they, they just have uh, enough guys that in the end – uh, they can get it done. They're a second half team. Mm-hmm. Every 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 game they've pulled out in the second half. I, th- I see the trend continuing here, but it's obviously going to be uh, you know with some hostility. I think I think Hamlin's going to give them a game. I really do think this is going to be a one possession game. Probably uh, you know fourth quarter decided. Uh, we've seen that in recent weeks. Duxbury having a little bit of trouble. You know getting the ball, especially against Pembroke there. What we saw a couple weeks ago. Um, Joe Spaziani from Hingham, I think, will have a big presence in this game. But I'm going to go with tradition here, and I'm going to go with Duxbury. I think defensively they have a little bit more than Hingham, and that's a very good group there. But I'm going to stick with the Dragons as well. Um, shifting over to Saturday and a couple ISL games coming up here. Uh, Roxbury Latin uh, went down from the ranks of the uh, undefeated last week, and they get uh, another tough one to follow up here at BBNN. Well, I, I think in the ISL you've seen a lot of these games where it, it comes down to whoever can score the most points. And Roxbury Latin, I think outside of Governor's Academy, might be one of the more explosive offenses yeah. in the ISL. Yeah. McKay Lowry, real deal, Boston College commit, uh, coming off a 450-yard performance two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, that says it all for me. Uh, BBNN, one of the more terrific targets there, and, and Brendan O'Neill, a tight end committed to Wake Forest. I just think uh, – I, I think Lowry and, and, and his brother, they can, do, they can do just enough to get it done, but it's going to be close. I'm going to go with BBNN. Um, I think the defense actually 
you know, uh, we as we mentioned a couple of weeks ago, young line there at Roxbury Latin, uh, pretty much no game experience coming into that year. And I think BBNN can take take advantage of that matchup up front. Um, swinging around uh, to Belmont Hill, they welcome Milton Academy this weekend. Yeah, that's another interesting one too. Uh, Kevin McDonald, uh, one mm-hmm. of the better uh, coaches in the ISL, I've been doing it for a while. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously had some great line lines over the years. I think they, they have another good one here. Uh, I, I like Belmont Hill winning this one. Um, I, I, I think they just got a little bit more to pull it out. You know? mm-hmm. I'm going to go with Milton Academy, Justin Yoon, and that leg again coming up. Oh, big boy. Time, can call Can that kid field kick goal. or what? Unbelievable. One of the greatest things <laughs> I've ever seen at this level, to be honest with you. And uh, we didn't get to it earlier, but uh, we will have a somewhat intriguing uh, matchup on the Cape on Saturday with Bill Ricca traveling down to Barnstable. Um, you know, does Bill Ricca kind of, you know, a couple of rebuilding years here, but uh, do they have enough defensively perhaps to slow down that Raid Raiders offensive juggernaut? Do you want the short answer or do you want the long answer? I'm going to go with the short here. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I just, you know, obviously I, I think that the, the – thinking here is maybe, you know, Bill Ricker gets them off guard. Obviously, they're looking toward towards uh, next week's game against Bridgewater Raynham yeah. for all the marbles there. But, I mean, they just, every week, you know, when they get into trouble, they, they go to Tadaro France and he gets the job done on both sides of the ball. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I got a for winning this one. But it could be uh, a, a, a bit of a, a, bit of a uh, upstart to start the game. I don't know if that's the right word, but I think Bill Rooker could come up with a haymaker. Trap game, perhaps, trap game. I, I think go. is the word that comes to word. mind. But I'm still good. We'll call it a trap game, but I see, yeah. still see Barnstable winning this by about two touchdowns in the end, which uh, brings us back here to Community Field again on Friday night. We will be here with the Massachusetts Army National Guard. We'll have a tent, the swag, pictures, Brennan, me, you know the whole deal. Throw it on the dartboard, throw it at our faces <laughs> for everybody in Everett, for everybody in Mansfield, by the way, I heard <laughs> from our spies over at Mansfield last week that, uh, you know, they were looking for us because uh, somebody over here uh, picked against them. Hey, whatever. You live, you learn. But let's wrap it up with this week. Mansfield, North Attleboro, who you got, Brendan? Yeah, I I, I don't want to put you in the hot water. and I know we like to be (laughs) contrarian here. Uh, I I think Mansfield showed a lot of good signs last week. I think they can can, uh, put a few more weapons on that perimeter than North Attleboro can defend. Mm -hmm. And I think in the end, it, it could be more high scoring than in, than in recent years. Y'all, you think of Manson North Attleboro, you think of these, you know, twenty to ten, seventeen, fourteen kind of scores. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I think this one could get a little bit up there on the scoreboard. Yeah. Yep. Mansfield can score in a hurry, um, but I mean, it is community field, and it's traditionally a defensive battle whenever you get on this uh, sacred acre here, if you will. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with Mansfield winning by a touchdown here, as 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 is tradition, a one one score game here. I'm not waffling to pressure from Hornets Nation out there, even though I did hear you, but I'm going to pick this game on the simple fact that traditionally, last in the last five years or so here, the away team has always won this matchup. Home field advantage is completely gone, That's really, out of, out of the book. Very true. So I'm going to stick with the Hornets here, and, uh, you know, it goes kind of contrary to popular belief, but, uh, you know, we know we're going to have a really raucous atmosphere here, and quite frankly, the score's not even going to matter. I know, I know. All right, I'm picking Mansfield. All right, the score does matter, but quite frankly, I'm I'm just in the words of Pete Carroll, I'm jacked and I'm pumped about this game. I'm I'm ready for the tailgate. <laughs> you know, I mean, and there's gonna be a t- I guess there's gonna be a great tailgate battle. Uh, Duxbury and Hingham bring as always the, uh, the food there, but yeah, I mean, I think from the moment you set up here, uh, it really is a special atmosphere here. Yep. From you know two or three hours before the game until you know the game's well over, it's uh, it's mm-hmm. always. Some stuff to give you some some stuff to write about for reporters. Yeah. You know, it's always something that happens here. And of course, folks at Community Field, we always encourage you get here early. We'll be here early, of course. We'll be hanging out, so come, hey, come say hi. And if you're from Mansfield, just make sure to bring your boxing gloves with you. <laughs> but uh, for now, all we got to do is play the games. Uh, as always, I'm Scott Barboza. He's Brennan Hall. Until next Thursday, we'll see you on the ESPNBoston.com High Schools Thursday preview.